Hey everybody, Carpe Diem, seize the day. I am here, I'm Lisa Dublin. This is Lisa Dublin Live and um, I'm continuing to interview my guests slash friends slash presenters for To All The Girls Conference happening on the 31st of October. And I'm so excited today. This is my childhood friend. We went to convent together and we did lots of stuff together. This is Nandi D. Turville. Nandi now resides in Toronto and um, she's an immigration lawyer. And you know, I, uh, Nandi, welcome. Thank well, you for having me. Thank yeah. you so much for having me, Lisa. Sure, for sure. And um, I, know, I know you have a lot to offer just in terms of immigration. I've been following you for a bit. We've reconnected. <laughs> Well, thank goodness for social media. Eh? Well, thank God for social media. Like, I was just saying to you that, you know, I'm just looking at my lineup for um, this conference and you being one of them presenting and uh, answering people's questions about Canadian immigration. And I just feel so blessed to know so many good people, right? I'm just, yes, just letting you know. Right. So um, I've been following your blogs and your video posts in particular. And what I realize is that you seem to have your, your hand on the pulse of the changes that are taking place in the Canadian immigration system. Like sometimes the re one of the reasons I asked you to come on was because a lot of people ask me, oh, how did you come to Canada? But we came here seven years ago and apparently things have changed. <laughs> Indeed, it, it's, it's certainly one of the things that keeps a practitioner on their toes for immigration. Um, unlike many laws, maybe in the Caribbean, we can use that as an example, as I did practice there as well. Things are very slow to move in terms of the laws in our countries, typically from the Caribbean. But here with immigration law, I mean, I'm literally putting out, as you've seen with my blog, I'm putting out information of new policies and new procedures that happen weekly. I mean, my blog is literally um, tries to cover just what has happened in the last two weeks. Um, I tend to focus on the main two things that have happened. Um, and you can tell from one step to the next. It's literally a matter of who can come to Canada and who can't. Um, right. And that changes so dramatically um, every week, every other week, especially in the time of COVID. Um, those updates have certainly been extensive. And I, I think it's important that people understand that it is ever changing. So again, you mentioned, typically we get this question, how did you migrate to Canada? Um, and, and people are genuinely are surprised when I say that the way I got into Canada is certainly not what's available to you to move to Canada. And so it's important for you to not just sort of listen to stories of your friends and family, as many of us Caribbean people tend to do with regards to our immigration, um, our immigration journey, mm -hmm. but actually get relevant, valid information from registered practitioners such as myself. Right. So tell me, how e easy is it for the average, let's say, Caribbean person um, to get to Canada right now? What, on, what, on what does it depend? So it depends on a few things. Um, funnily enough, we tend to think of immigration as only for people who um, sort of seeking job opportunities, but that might not only be the, the situation for everybody. So there are a wide variety of, of programs available. Um, a few ways, um, the majority of the ways that I encourage young adults and young professionals is starting with an education. You know, we both appreciate, I think, the value of an education. And if you're looking to pursue long term permanent residence in a foreign country, I think education is usually a really good tool to get there. So in terms of looking at programs, looking at things that it could improve yourself, you're looking at ways to so not only just to think solely on the purpose of immigration purposes, but also to increase your knowledge base in whichever field that you choose um, to pursue your career in. So I think that's usually a really good way to get here. But again, there are so many other Well, let's stop on the education because we don't want to give people too much. We want them to come out to all the girls' conference. You can register for the 31st because Nandi has a lot more information and you will get the opportunity to ask questions of her. But I wanted to stop on the education for a while because like when I got here and um, one of the values of having a Canadian education, I realized is that people then start to notice you. Exactly. I mean, 
Yeah. It, 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 you know, we in the Caribbean talk about, a lot of times we were like, oh, nepotism. Somebody only gets a job because somebody knows them. In Canada, the value of who knows you is even greater. You are in a position at an, from an education institution to not only meet people who you might, you know, interact with on a personal level, but you also get to build that network, which we both appreciate is so important in, in trying to find not only a job, but connections and other opportunities in various fields. So I think um, with, with education, you, you get bonuses. You get one, knowledge that nobody can take from you afterwards. Two, you get to build a network of people in your field, in the area that you're, you're interested in, and therefore you get to sort of create that group, maybe not for the job for the following day, but certainly people who will see how you do things that will be able to take you further, maybe two, three, even 10 years later. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I guess at a very elemental level, you know, I came, I, I already had a master's when I came here. And you know, in the Caribbean, we value the University of the West Indies. <laughs> yes, <we do. laughs> but at a certain level, people's eyes just glaze over when you mention those those credentials, and they don't start to see you except when they see things that they can um, they can identify with places and you know credentials that they can identify with. So some yes. of these places I Canadian I, experience. Like, yeah, Canadian experience, exactly. Canadian experience, Canadian experience, Canadian experience. It, exactly. it, it's fascinating. I think it's one of the greatest challenges when it comes to being an immigrant in a country is that how does your qualification experience sort of in a foreign jurisdiction where things are done differently measure to having um, to the place that you want to move to? And many an immigrant falls into that trap of being so very highly educated but not having that Canadian experience that could boost them or make them sort of click with a new em potential employer. Mm -hmm. So again, this is why I mentioned immigration, um, the education system as a route in, because it, it checks off so many boxes for many people. It checks up our arrogance too. Eh? It, it, <laughs> well. it, it, it kind of gets rid of that too, because you realize too, there, there's a lot that you need to learn. But at yeah. some point, you need to kind of humble yourself, learn, learn the language, learn the culture so that you can, you know, make a contribution, you know, where you can. It's well, it, it's, it's even greater than that, because even as a practitioner myself, I am not it's, it's not that I've, I've left the classroom. I've left the type certain types of classrooms, but I've certainly not left the classroom. I am continuously learning. I'm continuously attending um, educational programming. Um, for me, it's, it's part of my practice to always maintain. If two months has gone by and I've not attended an educational program with um, specifically related to immigration law, that is a really odd for, thing for me because I go to them perhaps every two, just even again, not to completely learn something new, but just to refresh and remind yourself of the concepts. And again, because immigration law is so ever changing, it is important that you know you are kept on the pulse of what is happening. And that's the only way you can do it is literally attending these types of events to make sure that your knowledge base widens and doesn't contract. Right, and I think that applies across the board as a professional anyway as a yeah. professional that you need to keep on constantly learning. So we just want to give you a taste. So we've, we've spoken about education. We won't go into the other areas, but I'm hoping that at the conference, you also touch on like the, the attitude of the immigrant, like what kinds of attitudes um, push you forward as opposed to the ones that might keep you back. Cause I had a steep flooded curve myself, <laughs> right? Where that is yes. concerned, there's a way to get, get ahead in this society. I'm sure you would agree that, you know, the things that you can do. So um, I, I don't want to go into too much. We've given people a taste. I'm sure people's interests are peaked um, in terms of what you can offer at the conference. Any parting words, Nandi? Any parting words is just to um, know where you're getting your information from. Um, that is really important. It can take you down the correct path or set you back sort of years um, in your process. Um, and just be mindful of where that information, I mean, information is power, but there are often times that it can, that power can be used for good as well as bad. Um, <laughs> and so true. I think um, it is important that wherever you get your information, you know that it's a valid source. 
Mm-hmm. And that's really important. And I really look forward to meeting everyone um, and interacting with your um, participants in the, the programs the coming up. All, the girls. all of us girls. <laughs> All the girls. All the girls. To all the girls. I don't know if you noticed, I specifically wore blue today because, you know, convent girls. I'm sorry. I'm just, just having a little shout out. I hope you weren't, I hope you weren't the one like stepping out in, in bright yellow, like when everybody else is in corporate blue, but we understand the corporate blue because you're a lawyer. (laughs) (laughs) You're a lawyer. So thank you so much, Natalie. Looking forward to hosting you. I'm sure people have lots of valid questions, um, you know, looking to get a better opportunities for life, which is why we're, you know, we've, we've moved away for a bit. Um, and so we can learn more on the 31st. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you on the 31st. Yeah. Bye. See Bye. you guys. Bye-bye.